Okay, let's get into another aspect related to the presidential election, ostensibly, but more fundamental. And that issue is, what is the goal of the liberal agenda versus the conservative agenda? And this applies in any country, okay? There is a basic philosophical difference if we eliminate, you know, greed and all that stuff. There's a basic philosophical difference between liberalism and conservatism that I've mentioned before, but I haven't covered in enough depth. The difference is how do you progress a society? Now, this difference has been a historical philosophy going all the way back in time. Okay, today we call it socialism or communism on the left, and we call it by many different names, usually capitalism um, on the right. But fundamentally, it's a question of how do you progress the human race? That's the essential philosophical difference. The left maintains that the only way you can progress the human race is through some kind of governmental sponsored set of programs. Some kind of governmental sponsored set of rules. And that government ought to be the arbiter of, in varying degrees, ought to be the arbiter of the society's well-being. Okay? The conservative side, essentially, in all periods of history, okay, any kind of economics, any kind of political system, the conservative side says, man is no good. Okay? Therefore, any set of politics, any set of economies have to be structured to basically ensure competition so that the bad ones, even though they temporarily win, they end up losing and go to the bottom. Okay, in other words, the conservative argument is basically, look, man is bad. The only way you're going to have progress in human society, therefore, is due to fighting and competition. Now, a conservative doesn't have to believe in God, but if he does, then you got the weight of all of those arguments about, you know, how God designed things to be added into the philosophy. Okay, and that is essentially the Christian, what we call today the Judeo-Christian point of view. It's not strictly um, restricted to a Judeo-Christian point of view. There are a lot of um, so-called beliefs in God that, you know, accord with this. So, on the flip side, on the liberal side, those who believe in some version of God will maintain that God, because of the whole God question, is a kind of government, okay? And that the government of God requires a government on earth that oversees everything. Now, what you have to understand is that the latter argument does not accord with history. See, if you have to pick between liberal and conservative, aren't you going to want to base the philosophy you espouse on facts? This is what's really essentially wrong with liberalism of any kind is that it has to accord with facts or the philosophy just falls flat. Liberalism basically contends, with or without a God person, that somehow government is the solution to problems and government is supposed to be, as it were, the God of society. And that this definition of government or God is somehow benevolent as distinct from, say, free society, corporations, free individuals, etc. To the liberal, the um, checks and balances that are needed 
to make the human virtuous have to stem from some big government, some institution. And so too, in your so-called liberal versions of God faiths, especially in Christianity, that there has to be some government on earth allegedly appointed by God that oversees and controls the progress in the human race. That's where Catholicism comes from. Okay? So you have this irony on the left, which is basically saying freedom only comes through tyranny. You see why that ends up being the, the statement. Because if you have a government that is essentially controlling everybody in order to allegedly benevolently move them into progress, then that government has to be tyrannical. Now, tyranny, like everything else, has stages, has degrees. You can have a little bit of tyranny or a lot. Obama is subscribing to something in the middle of the tyrannical spectrum. Benevolent government. Hillary Clinton, same thing. Bill Clinton, less than either one of those two. Okay. FDR, sort of, I don't know how... Probably less than all of the above. But still, the basic idea is inherent in all their philosophies that you need government as a sort of lead entity controlling the progressive um, advancement of the human race. That's how Catholicism got started. It got started that way under Constantine, and of course the Catholic Church lies about everything, so it lies about that. But historically now, facts, you can prove that's how Catholicism got started. And pretty much everybody who's not Catholic knows that. Because the facts are pretty bald. Those same facts show you, going all the way back in time, because this, this idea has been inherent in mankind from the beginning. If you go all the way back in time, you can find instances where city-states, because they started out small, where city-states, you had a king, they usually call them kings, the leader imposed a kind of set of rules and the whole idea in the society was supposed to look up to him. The king is the father of his country. The king is going to lead the people to freedom, blah, 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 blah. And some of those kings themselves were liberals in their own orientation. And if you look through history, you'll find out that no matter what they did, no matter how noble they themselves might have been, that the people that they had charge over, ruling with this philosophy in mind, those people kept on being more and more enslaved. Now the fault of this approach, liberalism, isn't necessarily the fault of those ruling. This is real important to understand. It's not necessarily the fault of those ruling but the liberal will always think it's the fault of those ruling. And the people underneath the liberal will always think it's the fault of those ruling. So that throughout history with this mental attitude and this philosophy of liberalism, you keep on having one king being overthrown and another king replacing as if having a new king is somehow going to produce new results. And it never does. I mean, you know, sometimes at best for a little while. And the same thing is true in later history when we dispensed with the ideas of kings, where you had, you know, like communism take forward. And you just change the ruler and everything's going to be better. It isn't better. That's because the fault of liberalism, you know, not working, is in liberalism. Because you got two kinds of problems going on. At the top, even if you're assuming that the rulers are noble, which often they are not, if you assume that they are, they are noble, 
the people underneath them are not. Because man is not. Okay? This, this is why the conservatives, with all of their flaws too, if you have to pick between two philosophies, you've got to pick the conservative one because historically that's the only one that proves out. Okay, people are not noble. The whole Rousseauian idea of the noble savage, you know, is just proven wrong every time. When you got people and you, and you let them go free, this is where liberalism gets its kick, you have people and you let them go free, they will destroy each other eventually. Okay? Because we just can't stand living next to somebody who's got more than we do. We gotta take from the ones who have more. And the ones who have more therefore start to get real defensive about it and start to look down on those who have less. And there is a fundamental enmity in man against Joe Blow has more than I do so I gotta fight Joe Blow and Joe Blow who has more looks at Jane Doe who has less and says well I gotta fight against Jane Doe you cannot get rid of that people are fundamentally jealous over anybody who has more than they do I don't understand that jealousy but you can just look at it anywhere in history and there you go that's why liberalism can't work if the people at the top running the liberal government are noble, the people at the bottom are not. So what the liberal at the top trying to run and do for the people at the bottom expects, the liberal at the top is expecting the people at the bottom to be noble and to respond with nobility to the noble goals at the top. And it never works that way. Because at the bottom, they're saying, okay, gimme, 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 gimme. And no matter how much you give them as a noble ruler, they will keep accounting it as their due, and they want more from you. They will not learn nobility that way. They won't learn it that way. And this is the fundamental error, for example, in the United States, but not just the United States, with the whole liberal side of politics. They keep thinking if we impose, impose, impose nobility from on high, then the people down below will, you know, be grateful, will learn from it, and will rise up. Marxism is based on that concept. Communism could only work if everybody was virtuous, but they're not. Liberalism only works when everybody is virtuous but they're not so the thing that's so you know what do you want to call it depressing about liberalism is that you do have okay you do have a lot of people who really believe in what in the you know among the rich is called no bless the bleach the the higher should help the lower and that's in the bible too and they think well let's create a government that does that and then the people at the bottom will respond, be grateful, and rise up. What's really sad is that unless the people at the bottom are grateful and rise up, it won't work. So in some years, at some points, in some segments of society, some of the people at the bottom are noble and do rise up. So that gives a lie. See, they don't, this, this is why liberalism is always, you know, um, a movement. Some people do respond, a few. And so the liberal looks at those few who respond and miscalculates that everybody's responding. But everybody isn't, it's only the few. And the conservative comes back, looks at the same data, and says, hi, those few who responded would have been more who responded if you didn't impose liberalism on them. Because there are always a few in society who rise up. Period. What you want to do is encourage more than just a few to rise up. And the only way to do that is the school of hard knocks.
Because man is fundamentally lazy, man is fundamentally jealous, man is fundamentally greedy and grabby, and therefore you're going to use the fundamentals of man to, for man of his own will to rise up out of his own greed. That's the only way it's ever going to work. And it never works very well. The liberal can't stand that being true. The liberal wants to, you know, make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And the conservative says that ain't going to happen if you impose your nobility on a populace which has none, and you ha and they haven't learned that nobility first. All you're going to do is bring the whole society down, because then you're. Um, causing the few who would have risen up to be smashed down with the many who are already bad. And that's what's proven true over the years. And I mean, we're talking centuries. Every single time. And then the liberal comes back and says, well, but we got to do something. And the answer is, well, your something is going to have to be very strictly controlled. You have to keep the school of hard knocks alive. You have to keep it vibrant. You have to have everybody competing against themselves and each other in order for society to progress. There just is no other way. And we've seen that be proven. Because every time socialism or some kind of benevolent rule from on high is imposed, the people go down. They don't go down right away because usually societies they go back and forth between conservative and liberal because when you go to the conservative side you see how bad the competition has to be and you see how much suffering there is and you say to yourself oh we got to do something about this and then you switch back toward a liberal position and then that just really makes it worse. But you don't know that when you're doing it. You don't know it till like a hundred years and you look back. If we look back on American history, for example, you look back to the 1850s, 1860s Civil War, that got started due to liberalism. Lincoln was a liberal. We don't call him that today, but he really was, if you look at the positions he took. He was a liberal. And look what happened. As a result of Lincoln and the Civil War, blacks were more depressed and oppressed for a lot longer than was going to happen if you just let it go. Because the South was already considering stopping slavery. The same movement was occurring in Britain. In the 1860s, there was a lot of discussion amongst the so-called white elites. Hey, you know what? Slavery isn't working out for us. Duh. It didn't work out for Rome either. You can't enslave people. That's just going to bring your economy down. Okay? It just doesn't work. It's been tried for centuries. People have been doing it for centuries. They tell themselves, oh, we'll make money. And, you know, they have all this wrong idea. Because slavery is founded on liberalism, too. Doesn't seem like it, but it is. That's why God outlawed slavery in the Bible. And I'm sorry that the atheists are so stupid that they don't understand that the word that's translated slavery doesn't mean slavery. It means employment contract. The only kind of slavery that we call slavery is the same kind of slavery the Bible really calls slavery, except it's mistranslated. And I think it's in Exodus 21, where it talks about kidnapping somebody and selling them as a slave. That's the slavery we know of. But all the other terms are not slavery, they're employment contracts. Like when Jacob went to Laban and became his slave for what ended up being 21 years. Jacob agreed to that. That's what we would call employment contract today. Slavery doesn't work. Liberalism is a form of slavery. Lincoln decided, oh, well, you know, slavery doesn't work. We're going to free the slaves. Okay, but really what you've just done is changed to the master. 
you changed the individual plantation owners in the South who are already getting rid of their slaves anyhow. You changed them to the federal government as their master. And you called them free, but they really weren't because now they were subject to you. And you say, well, brain out, it wasn't quite that way. That was the philosophy behind it and where we are today as a result of it. So instead of just the blacks being enslaved by the government, it's all of us. And our degree of slavery is less than in other countries. Whenever you have an imposed government from on high that's messing with the economy, that's telling you that they are, you know, they're, they're, they're the Pope over your life. They know what's best. That's slavery. A little or a lot, but it's slavery. Humans were not designed for that. And I don't care whether you say nature was a designer or God was a designer, it should be patent to you historically that humans are not designed for that. The only way you or I advance is if by our own free will we get out of the mire in which we find ourselves. Period. It's not a happy fact. I hate it just as much as anybody else. And I especially hate it because I can't stand to see other people suffer. You make me suffer, fine. But when I see somebody else suffer, I can't take it. I just, I just crumble up on the floor. I can't. I can't even survive. When I see comments in YouTube that shows that the person who's talking has absolutely nothing going on in his head, the first instinct I've got is to give them the information, thinking that's going to save them. That's a liberal notion. I'm wrong when I do that. That's why I'm talking into these audios. I think, oh, if only I give you the information, you'll magically understand it and wake up and be all better now. I'm dead wrong. Now there's other reasons to provide the information. But that liberal idea, that liberal goal, will never, ever be met. And you'll do it yourself. You'll think, oh, poor soul, you don't understand God, you don't understand the Bible, you don't understand some political idea. Here, let me give you the information and you will magically understand it and magically change. Guess what? When you do that, they don't. Because their will has to want to do that. And if their will wants to do that, they don't actually need it from you. So when I do these audios now, God's reason for it is to train me, not you. Now if he chooses you to listen, then he'll train you. It's not me. I'm doing nothing. That's the actual truth of it. Conservative. God designed each one of us to be sovereign inside our own souls. And there's no amount of imposition on the outside that's going to that's gonna actually cause you to lose your freedom. Only you can lose your freedom. Freedom is on the inside, not on the outside. But, to, how do you want to call it, reflect that fact. All of the outside depends on inside freedom. So the amount of inside freedom you got determines the amount of outside freedom you'll have. No matter what kind of government you got, no matter what kind of economy you got. And the irony is, that's all in Second Corinthians 3, which Donald Trump reversed. Donald Trump reversed 2 Corinthians 3, which is saying that only your freedom is on the inside and there's nothing on the outside that can alter it. Donald Trump reversed it to the liberal notion that he can protect Christians as if he were the Holy Spirit. Citing 2 Corinthians 3.17 at the Liberty University rally that he went to the second time, as if he were God. That tells you right there and then not to vote for him. But all the stupid Christians are. They're voting for him or Ted Cruz, and both represent the same dominionist idea, which is a liberal notion that somehow we are to bring Christ back to earth by taking over government in the United States. That's what they are. They're the equivalent of Islamists. 
except calling themselves Christian. We are to take over the world by taking over the political institutions of the world and making them Christian. What do you think the Islamists mean? What do you think ISIS is? What do you think the caliphate is? It's the same idea. But oh, Christians are too dumb to live. They don't know that. They call themselves conservatives, but actually that position is liberal. You see why? Uh, God ruling on high. If we take over the political institutions of the United States, then Christ will come back. As if Christ needed human government in order to be God. Can you get dumber than that? So you got your pick in this presidential election between liberal and conservative, and right now Satan's presenting us with a choice of Hillary or Bernie Sanders, who's socialist, or Donald Trump, who's backed by the same kind of idea, but calling it conservative. Tweedledee and Tweedledum. And that's what everybody's rebelling against. Well, the Republicans are acting just like the Democrats. Yeah, and if you elect Donald Trump, you'll get more of the same. So you got a choice between Hillary or Hillary. Trump calling Trump, he's called Trump, but he's really Hillary, or Hillary calling herself liberal, one liberal or another, one dominionist or another, one big government is the noble entity over you versus another, and the conservatives can't tell the difference, so they're not really conservative, are they? See, so what you're looking at now is more of the same no matter who you vote for so my counsel is that I gotta do myself vote for God and not any of those jerks and there's gotta be somebody else running who you can vote for because you have to vote anyway before God even if that person doesn't win who do you vote for to vote for God that you have to talk to God about peace out